Welcome to our used 2019 Flagstaff 19 FD. Starting out in the back corner here, you get a stabilizer jack. All that does is run down, contact the ground, give it another turn or so just to firm it up. And it'll get rid of any sort of bounce or so you see you got in the unit right now. Once we get around and I show you your sewer hose, you will see that the sewer hose has the same ears on it that this cap has. Works the same way, you'll just kind of press it, give it a little turn off, pick up a new one on. On the left over here, you get a gray valve. Gray valve's controlling your gray tank. Gray, gray tank is filled from your sinks as well as your shower. Typically gonna be your cleanest water, so we'll dump that valve last. Black valve on the right here controls your black tank. Black tank is filled from your toilet. Of course, it's gonna be your dirtiest water, so we'll dump that first. And then as signified by that little sticker right there, you got two low point drains up here, one for the hot line, one for the cold line. Basically, just open those up, allows the water system to drain itself out. So before leaving camping, you don't let your water go stale or stagnant. Or before winterizing the unit, you can just dump all that water out before antifreeze gets pumped through. Your power inlet right here, so as you pop that open, you'll find a little notch in the bottom corner there. It's gonna line up with that notch there. Press those in together and give it a little eighth turn. That'll lock it into place. And then you get the threaded collar in the back there to really lock it down. As you follow the cord back, you're going to find a standard 30 amp end. Most campsites have that. You can just plug straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug in to charge your batteries or on your fridge, you got the power to do so. Right beside it is your cable and satellite inlets. Cable on the left, satellite on the right. Coax cables plug into their respective ports, fire up at their TV locations. A couple of uh, fridge vents there. Nothing really back there for you to worry about. Pretty much just service ports. Vent for your, vent for your stove up here. So of course, propane stove is putting off fumes whenever you're using it. You have a fan inside to evacuate those fumes. You just want to make sure this flap's opened up so those fumes can make it out. Pressing it back into place till it clicks just prevents any dust from picking up in there. That sticker here, fresh water tank drain, is kind of more so just in the middle of your axles, actually. Definitely easier to access from the back. Basically, a little pack cock there. Just going to turn that back side of it. So it drains out, simple as that. Once you're done, just closing it back off. Fresh water inlets just right here. So your water hose will plug into there, turn on the water and it fills up your fresh water tank. Right beside it is a black tank flush valve. So you may notice over time after having gone and dumped your black tank, your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically it's just some debris hanging in between your probes. So what you're gonna do is take your water hose and plug it in there, turn on the water and that'll just flush out that tank for you. Up above that's an exterior shower, so you'll get a key just like this guy here. Stick it on into there, open it up. Hot and cold water, a three foot head, sorry, a three foot hose with a standard head. Once you're done, just tucking that hose back in there. The handle underneath the handles, close it back off. Down underneath it all, we got the exhaust for your furnace. So if you're ever running a furnace, use it to make sure it's not blocked off. It does get hot. A little storage compartment here. This is where you're going to find your shore cord once you're done. Around front of the unit, you get a little service light. It's just on its own switch right in the bottom there. Batteries housed inside of this box here. As long as you're plugged into that short cord in the back or your seven pin, your tow vehicle, that battery's charging for you. Those two knobs, you can loosen off, push them back, open up that flap to get access to your propane tanks. For the video, I pull it right off and that way we can show you that little arrow there. So it's currently red, just letting us know we've got no propane in the system. As we open this tank up, you see it goes green. If it were to go red while you have a tank open, it's just letting you know that tank's now empty. At that point, just close that off, put the change over to the other side, run off of that tank while you get the other one filled. In front's the power tongue jack, your light switch on the left there, on the right side, up is down, down is up. Solar panel plug in right there, so a two prong plug will go into there, charges your batteries. Another little storage compartment here beside it. Right by your entry door, you do get a geofire protected outlet. Once we get inside of the unit, you will find a little kind of uh, prop for up here. It'll basically have a little channel that's got a groove that'll sit in the top, and then it just kind of sits down with a little kick out to prop it up. Behind it all is your hot water tank. All your controls for turning this guy on are just inside the unit. For turning it on with electricity, you just got a little switch down there, super simple. Up top, you get your pressure relief valve. So before turning it on with either source, you just want to open that up, make sure a bit of water comes out of there. If you're not getting any water out, there's a chance it's empty. So at that point, you just want to make sure it's filled up before you fill, before you fire it up, just so you're not running the risk of burning your, or sorry, <laughs> just so you're not running the risk of burning out your elements. There's the propane quick connect down here. So if you're looking to tie in a barbecue, you do have the power to do so. Kind of the only thing I can go over here down. Right. The only thing I can really go over down here right now is just kind of that quick connect collar. So basically be pushing it back, you attach your hose, lock it into place, then you have that valve there. Then you'd open up that valve. With that valve open, you cannot undo that quick connect, so it's just kind of an added safety. Then that dust cap back in there whenever you're not using it. 
up in a little storage compartment here. This is where you're gonna find your water hose. Inside of that water hose, you'll find your park adapter, 30 amp cord into there, 15 to a standard outlet. Your sewer hose is right back here as well. So you can see it's got the same ears on it that your sewer tap had. Water filter housing here, so you don't need a filter, but I do recommend it. So basically you just spin this guy off, filter sits in there, tighten it back down, simple as that. In the back of the unit, you have a city water connection on the right side here. So your water hose will just plug into there, turn on the water, and it'll pressurize the lines throughout the unit. Once it comes time to winterize the unit, you'll just stick a hose into there, turn on your water pump, stick the other end of the hose into your jug of antifreeze, and that'll suck it up through the system. A ladder here to get up top and check all of your seals. And then right in the center there, you can see our pre-wired for a rear view or observation camera. Now making our way inside. It says to handle this up 90 degrees, falls into place, then you get your door handle here, opens on up. It is on a friction hinge, so it kind of sits there to your lead up. For your steps here, you're just going to pull that handle over, flip them on out. There's a little quick pin on either side there, you can push that in and out, just kind of extend or retract your legs based on your campsite units. As we get inside, first things first, right on the left, you got your fire extinguisher, that's standard, pull the pin point and shoot. Up the wall from there, we've got all your light switches, so interiors on the left, porch in the center there, just a little orange light outside. Awning light does your awning strip. Awning itself is on this switch here. Press and hold, extend, and the awning will make its way out. Once that awning's fully extended, you're just gonna see a little white flap come down as well as the gray metal tube. And once you see those, you're gonna stop. If you're continuing extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case the fabric will be underneath the tube, allowing it to then hold water, accelerating growth of mold and mildew. There's our flap, there's the tube, so we'll stop right there. Now if it were to start raining, it's of course gonna hold some water, so what you can do is come to either arm, front, or rear, just loosen off that knob, pull that handle down and in, or the arm down and in towards the trailer, then you can tighten it back off, then you see it changes the pitch of the awning out of the head, allowing water to then run off. Now if you like that angle better, because it does give you more shade, you can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring it, bring it back in though, just make sure these knobs are loosened back off and your arm is fully extended, just so you're not running the rest of the bending of it. Then we press and hold the track, the arm will make its way back in. Again, we're just watching to make sure that your fabric's underneath or over top of the tube. Another thing to keep in mind with your awning is once you get up to about 15, 20 kilometers an hour wind, it is catching all that wind, so you again just want to bring it back in so you're not running the risk of bending your arms. Right above your awning switch, you have a tank heater switch, basically just in a little, a little electric pad stuck to the bottom of your tanks just to prevent them from freezing. Water heater with electricity is right beside that, so you do need this switch on as well as the switch at the water heater for it to work. Water heater on gas, you hit that switch there, you get that little red light letting you know your ignition sequence will start. Once that sequence has started, that light will go out. It'll try that three times. If after the third try it doesn't fire up, that light will come on and stay on. At that point, you'll just be turning that switch off and back on to reset it. Water pump's on the left side there, you turn that switch on, turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. Monitor system's on the left side, battery on the bottom there, you can see we're currently C for charging, G would be good, F is fair, L is low. Your fresh tank, as you fill that up, will go to a third, two thirds and full, same idea for your black and your gray tanks. Right in front of the unit, you can see you've currently got it set up as your lounge right now, so you do have your little uh, couch here. Grab this handle here and pull it straight up. It does flip that couch back over. And then also if you kind of leave it at the halfway point there you can see you do have that storage underneath this is that little table that i was telling you about for outside so this little channel there you can see the top half that hooks in and that bottom leg that would just kind of sit against the wall while that table's down you also have your murphy bed back here so we're just going to get rid of those travel straps pull them out of the way and it'll flip on down kick this headboard over and footboard over and then we do have a latch I think yep that's just this piece right here so you turn that in pick it up and then it folds back away 
Make sure those travel latches are always in. Closet space on either side. Down here you have a power outlet. Other side is a USB outlet as well as an inverter controller. So if you turn that on, once it's turned on, you get that little green light there. Just letting you know that you've got your inverter turned on. All your inverter's doing is taking your 12 volt power from your battery, inverting it and turning it into 120 volt power so you can run your fridge. Emergency exit right here, pull that red tab to get rid of the screen, take the sandal here, throw it outside, hop on out. And blinds throughout the unit. I just these slow rides, so they just kind of sit where you leave them. Once you're done, just snap them, and they run back away. Little fold out kind of, uh, what's it called there? The countertop extender. JFI protected outlet, test on the bottom, preset on top. A little broom holder for you there as well. Thermostat control, so this is just for your furnace. So with that slider all the way over to the left, that's it turned off. As we move to the right, you'll hear it click. And then all the way over to the right is your max temp. Furnace is right behind this panel here. Once it gets going, it'll be dumping all of its air out of all of our little portals that we'll find throughout the units. Once you're done, just slide it all the way over to the left till it clicks, and that's it then turned off. Above your sink, you get a little ice. And some storage above all that. Hot and cold water at the sink. A little bit of storage underneath it, as well as a little bottle opener. Some more storage. Over top of your range, you get the little light as well as the fan here. So that's that fan that you want turned on with that flap outside opened up. Bifold cover just flips on back. You turn the knob over to light, press and hold the igniter. And just as it clears all the air of the propane line, you'll see these guys fire up. There we go. Once you're done, just turn them all back off. Let it cool down and you can bring the cover back down. For the oven, you're going to grab a lighter, open it up, turn that knob over to pilot and press and hold. And right in the back there, actually I think we have an igniter here. Yes we do. You can press and hold that ignite button still. Don't need a lighter. Once you get that pilot light going, you just hold the knob for another couple of seconds and you can release the flame will then hold itself. I didn't quite wait long enough. All right. and then you turn up to your desired temperature, and she fires right up. Once you're done, turn it back down just to pilot, and hold just the pilot light for you. But if you're traveling, you just want to make sure that guy's right off. Underneath is a little bit more storage. Microwave up top here. Pretty standard, just like home. For the fridge, power button's on the left there. All right, so with that button close to flush, that's it turned on. You'll see auto comes on. Auto is first looking for AC power. If AC power is taken away, it'll automatically flip over to gas. If you're out dry camping and want it running just on gas, have that button come out over flush. It'll fire up just on gas. If that check light were to turn on, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up. At that point, just off, back on to reset it. So you can see the open fridge portion there. And then the freezer up top. Temp selection is just in your top right corner there. Underneath it, we have your converter. Press the top and center and it pops on open. Whenever a breaker breaks, it'll sit in the middle. So just turn it off and then back on to reset it. And on the right side, you get all of your fuses. Above the dinette, you have a bunch of storage here. You're also gonna find your smoke detector here. That needs a battery. Down in between the dinette, you're gonna find your LP detector. Propane is heavier than air, it sits on the floor. That guy detects it and starts going off just like a smoke detector would. The dinette itself does fold down into a bed, so you can take your tabletop and just wiggle it up out of the legs. It's also just got the little mounts on the wall there. The table will then sit down into the little black blocks, take your back cushions, fill in the middle, creates a bed. There's also a little light up here. Two speakers underneath there as well are tied into the stereo here. Power button there turns it on, press it again, that'll mute it, press and hold to turn it off. Zone one's your inside set, zone two's your outside set, AM, FM, USB, Bluetooth, and all the other sources there. Wi-Fi, just turn that switch on, gives you your Wi-Fi, all your information for it right there. TV's mounted right here, solar charge controller as well. Then into the bathroom. Light switch is just right on the wall there. A bit of closet space back here. A little towel rack. That knob there, just turn that to open it up. Once you got it set in its place, just pushing it up to lock it in. 
Speeds one through four. To turn it off, you just press off. Open up the toilet there. Your flushers on the right side. Get your sink right behind me. Medicine cabinet here as well. A little bit of storage underneath the sink as well. Just be mindful of your drains and your water lines. Let me get your shower behind us here as well. You get the standard head and hose, hot and cold water, of course. And uh, lastly, is going to be your air conditioner. So you have here two low fan controls. So that's just the low fan moving some air around. High fan is now the high fan moving some air. A little cool is where the compressor will actually cut in and out as needed, just kind of giving you your target temperature. And then a high cool, same idea, just now it'll use the high fan. Notice you do have the temp selection knob back here that does have heat on it heat strip is not installed in this air conditioner we do have a dedicated furnace so that heat won't work we'll just be leaving that in max cool and uh that's it for this thing so if you've got any other questions on it please feel free to give us a call 204-237-7272